Everyone, welcome back to the Quinton Group.tv. Yes, I'm your host, Jeff Quinton. So I'm going to do a little series here. The top 10 common mistakes sellers make when negotiating deals and getting their home on the market. So common mistake number one is overpricing the property. Many sellers today, they don't set a realistic price. They set an unrealistic price on their property. What happens when you set an unrealistic price on the property or overprice it? Well, number of buyers that would be normally interested won't show up. Buyers are well-educated more than they've ever been. So by pricing your property overpriced, they recognize it's overpriced and they understand that it's not a good value. Those sellers that are overpriced, ultimately what happens? They end up reducing the price later on and after they reduce it than if they would have priced it in the beginning. Let's not make that mistake. Price it right from the beginning. Number two is failing to prepare the property for sale. See right now, any sellers, you know, they just, they're, they're so used to living in the properties the way they have and not understanding looking in from the eyes of the buyer that's coming in. So what we need to do, make sure we clean, thoroughly clean, and we declutter the property and make sure the curb appeal outside is one of which is appealing. So make sure that we go ahead and everything nice, neat, and tidy. Remove all the clutter. For example, not having all kinds of things on your counters. If you have beautiful counters, like granite counters, let's show that off. Let's get all the counter appliances off there, get the mail off of there, get the food, whatever it is you got on there, off of the counters, right? That would be an example. So not properly staging or getting the property prepared is mistake number two. Let's go ahead and get everything cleaned up so it shows like a show home. Mistake number three, is understanding the market conditions. You know, as a real estate professional, we look and study the prices of homes every day. Therefore, we assume that a seller will list the homes that will cause it to sell at a right price during the market conditions. Sellers have to understand what the marketing conditions are. Marketing conditions consist of supply and demand. If we have a lot of supply, right? Unfortunately, prices will be as strong, okay? If we have a lot of supply, white prices typically are not gonna be way up there, right? However, if we have a low supply, and prices typically will stay steady and or continue to appreciate. We have to look at one factor when it comes to market condition. That's called absorption rate. Absorption rate basically tells us the number of homes that are available versus demand that we have divided it into each other. That tells you how long a home or homes will be on the market sitting, okay? That is the one key factor that's out there regarding absorption rate, understanding what's trending, if market values are gonna continue to rise, go flat or go down, and the time on the market. So make sure you talk to your real estate professional about absorption rate. Well, number four, the inflexibility of negotiation of a seller. Can't tell you how many times I've seen this mistake that sellers get an offer of a property and they just don't like the offer, the terms, whatever it may be. You always gotta remember, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And too many mistakes have been made in sellers where an offer's come in lower than they may have expected or their asking price and they turn it away and say no. They shut it down, say no, I'm not countering, nothing, nada, later not interested without actually engaging into the actual negotiation process. They've lost that buyer. They'll never actually know how much that buyer would have paid. The buyer moves on and finds a different seller that's willing to negotiate, buys that property. This seller then who originally had a buyer then waits, waits, and waits, and another buyer doesn't show up or the next buyer that shows up pays less than the first buyer is willing to offer. Always go ahead and not be so inflexible. Be flexible, not only on the terms, right? But the conditions of the offer, understand it and let the real estate professional guide you along so that you can engage in the process. Number five is the lack of transparency and disclosure. Today, you know, buyers want disclosures, right? They want transparency. They want to know everything about the property. By not actually disclosing, maybe there's a certain things in the property that don't work or something that, that you're aware of or could be aware of. Maybe it's a structural issue. Maybe it's a roof. Maybe things have leaked before and then it's not leaking now. Whatever it may be, failure to disclose causes issues that may come up later on through lawsuits and so forth. Let's not make the mistake. Be upfront, tell everybody what it is, fill out the seller's disclosures and provide all that information up front, and you don't have to worry about anything later. Okay, common mistake sellers make number six. Ignoring buyer feedback. Part of our process when you list a home with us, we're gonna give you buyer feedback. We're gonna provide that to you after each showing as long as we get it from the other agent. They're gonna tell us about, did they like the condition? Did they like the price? What they felt about the price? what they felt about the overall property in general in the showing. And as many times as the buyers will give you this feedback, the buyer's agents will give you this feedback. You know, on a scale of one to five, it was a two, okay? That means they didn't, they felt the property wasn't in its best condition, okay? What do you feel about the price? Well, we thought it was overpriced, okay? Let this be an opportunity to take that feedback that's giving you good insight of what's going on to make some adjustments. And maybe this condition isn't good. Maybe it needs a lot of work. 
Maybe we need to put a couple bucks into certain things. Let's find out a little more detail what was going on. Let's not ignore that and say, oh, well, we'll find the right buyer, right? This isn't the right buyer for you. May or may not be. I get it. But if they continue, if you continue to get this feedback over and over, they're telling you something, giving you insight about the property. Let's use this relevant information to go ahead and make some adjustments to get you top dollar. Let's not make that mistake. When marketing is selling the property, this is number seven. Poor marketing and exposure. So many times I see sellers out there hire a broker or an agent, maybe they're selling on their own and they're simply just not getting the marketing or the exposure in the market to the right amount of buyers. We gotta make sure that all the marketing efforts are put out to get the right amount of exposure to the right buyer, not only online, but also locally, even inside the real estate community. Very, very important that you're getting the exposure to the right buyers. Now, the number one marketing piece that you can ever do, number one, here's the secret, it's price. Remember, you can go market the property everywhere but until it's priced right, that's your number one piece of marketing. That's going to attract the agents and the buyers to come get excited about your property. However, we have to make sure that the property also is getting the right marketing with the right professional photography, the right online marketing, everything about it, the comments, the remarks in the MLS, it's positioned the right way. Make sure all that's happening so you don't avoid this mistake by not getting exposed to the right people. Common mistake number eight, rushing the negotiation process. Too many sellers I see out there, they just rush the process. They don't let a little grass grow, let the negotiation of each agent and other agent or buyer and seller get and engage in that process and don't rush it along the way. Sometimes we need to evaluate all the offers if there's more than one, okay? The conditions of the offers, all the terms, and let's not negotiate right away, you know, immediately until everything is considered, all right? Sometimes I see sellers jump the gun just a little bit and they force it and sometimes it's not the right way and make a mistake Sometimes they can get the buyer to walk just because the negotiation process was rushed and not done properly. Let's not make that mistake. Mistake number nine, neglecting to consider contingencies. Too many times I see sellers out there, a home sale contingency comes in on an agreement. No, 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 I'm not taking a home sale. They got to sell their house. Have them go sell their house first. Come talk to me, whatever it may be, right? Hey, many times in the market today, someone needs to sell a home to be for a buyer, not their home. Sometimes today in this market, because inventory is so low, they need to identify a home to buy first before they'll actually sell theirs. It's very common today that a seller will make it contingent upon the sale of theirs or someone may list their home contingent upon them finding one. Listen, contingencies, I understand, but having no offer versus one with a contingency is better than having one that's without one. Let the real estate agent guide you along and say, is it a realistic contingency? Maybe tighten up the time frames, trying to see what ha has to happen here. Is there, a, say, in a home sale contingency, a 24-hour kickout clause or 48-hour kickout clause with the first rate refusal, whatever it may be? These are ways to make deals happen in the market versus just brushing them off. So important to take a look at contingencies, not with only home sale, but with homes inspections, any other thing else out there. Work with the buyers typically to overcome their concerns. And typically, in most cases, you'll overcome them and they'll be more motivated and you'll be able to get a deal done. Let's be open-minded when it comes to continuities. Mistake number 10. So mistake number 10 for me, uh, it's a very important one, you know, not seeking professional assistance and selling real estate or getting the right advice. Right advice from everyone involved in the transaction, right? Sometimes sellers say, I can just do this on my own. I don't need your opinion or, or I don't need your advice. I know everything. I, I know the legal side and the title side. You know, I know the inspection negotiation side, whatever it may be. Let the professionals give you the right direction that have the experience. Look, sometimes sellers' egos get in the way, they think they know it all, it happens, I understand. And many times they do know a lot. However, they're paying a lot of money to a real estate salesperson for their advice. They should go ahead and take it, especially on the legal side, right? Sometimes us sellers, or us realtors will advise a seller, look, this is a legal issue. We need to go ahead and get a legal opinion on this. I don't wanna give you mine, okay? And then the seller might say, well, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just make the decision. That's fine. But understand it'd be better off not making this mistake and you should go ahead and get the legal advice in this case. So take a look at the team around you or the real estate agents team around you, this revival transaction that can guide you the right way. Let's not make that mistake.